Hey, Real Life. Happy Sunday. I am so thankful you're continuing to join us with this devotional series that we have been doing. Um, I know some of you, this is new. Uh, the whole Jesus thing is new. Some of you may have been um, in scripture for a long time, but I'm so thankful this week we have been concentrating on meditating on scripture. And the word meditation means just to deeply think upon something. And probably you've already been doing this in your life. If you're in sports, um, you may have meditated on a position or plays that you have to have. Maybe you've meditated on strategies to win that chess tournament or that quiz bow tournament. Maybe you, if you're a gymnast, you've meditated on your routines to see how you could improve those for the next competition. If you're a musician, you've meditated on music to see if you can play it or sing it um, better for a competition or a concert. So meditation is just really thinking through things. And we're talking about meditating on scripture this week and how important that is because when you meditate on something, it is to bring it into you, into your innermost being so that you then can spit it back out and apply it to areas of your life. So we wanna be able to do that with scripture. So um, if you have your Bible close by, grab it or open up your Bible app and grab a pencil and a piece of paper because we know that when we write down things that we're learning, that they will stick with us a whole lot more. Um, and we're going to be in Colossians 1. I'm going to be reading um, from the New Living Translation, um, the NIV version. Uh, I love this version particularly for me. Um, so I'm going to read through Colossians 1 starting at verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. In this passage, um, the Colossian church was questioning whether Christ was fully God because God is invisible and Christ was visible and God sent Christ to the earth in flesh uh, to be among people because we were separated from him from sin and he can't be a part of sin. So, so Christ began to become that bridge and they were questioning that. And so the first time you read it, you're just reading the passage like we just did. Um, now I want you to go read it again a second time. You want to reflect. So what is something that stood out? So let me give you an example. For me, the first thing that stood out is that he sent Christ as a human to be on earth with us. That's the first thing that stood out to me. So with that thought in my head, um, I might write that down on my paper and I will go back and read it the second time. This time we're going to read it to respond. So my thought is um, Christ was fully human and he sent him to the earth. So I'm going to go back and read that with that thought in my head and that's called response. So now what I'm going to do after I've read it the second time is I'm going to sit down and write, why, why, why do I think God might have sent Christ as a human on earth and maybe just what is my response to that? What do I think about that? Just start writing your thoughts. Um, and then I want you to read through it one more time. And after this time, you're going to rest in it. And what that means is you're going to just sit still with what you have read. Because God tells us that the Word of God is living and breathing. And every time you read a passage, every time you read it, God's going to show you something different. So that third time when you've read through it, you're going to rest in that. And maybe in that moment, you're just getting quiet and still. You're not going to think about your thoughts. Maybe you're going to take in what God is speaking to you through what you have just read. 
um, the three times that you read through it helps that get that scripture inside of you and let you like place it in your innermost being. So then you can go, ah, oh, how am I going to apply what I've learned today out to you guys? Love you guys. Let me pray for you real quick. Lord, I just thank you so much for each of these students who are here today who are just trying to grow in their faith with you. Lord, I pray that you be with each of them. You know what's on their hearts and their minds, that you speak truth to them through the word today um, and what they're learning. Lord, we love you so much and thank you for this time together. Amen. Have a great day, real life.